In a recent interview, Kamala Harris came up with a new policy position. She now says she supports reparations for slavery. We have got to address that, um, again, it's back to the inequities. There, through, you know, look, <laughs> America has a history of 200 years of slavery. Mm -hmm. People aren't starting out on the same base in terms of their ability to succeed. And so we have got to, to recognize that and give people the, a lift up. So you are for some type of... Yes, I am. Reparation. Okay. Yes, I am. It used to be an eccentric opinion. Suddenly, lots of people seem to have it, not just Kamala Harris. Today, just today, Senator Elizabeth Warren, maybe under the influence of peyote, said that she also supports reparations. So did Julian Castro. Just two years ago, keep in mind, Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton were both asked about this and both said they opposed it. Five years now, we'll be tearing down statues for taking that position, but that's where we are today. Author and columnist Mark Stein has been following this and joins us tonight. Things like seem, seems like things are moving kind of fast, Mark. Yeah, they are. And uh, this is disturbing if reparations is becoming a mainstream position. It's particularly absurd, I think, uh, for Elizabeth Warren to be in favor of that. This is someone who, uh, in a sense, has benefited from a fake appropriation of racial grievance. As you know, the business about her being one, one, one thousand and twenty-fourth uh, Native American, presumably, and yet uh, presenting herself as Harvard Law School's first woman of color. Uh, that's what happens when you actually get into this sort of neo-apartheid of racial classification. And it, I find it particularly absurd. I mean, when, when Kamala Harris says people are not starting from the same point, uh, slavery was abolished a century and a half ago. Nobody alive today has a grandparent who was a slave. And in that sense, I think you reach a point where, you know, you need to move on. I mean, I, I, you, the reparations thing eventually, as the decades go by, becomes uh, ridiculous. I'm Canadian. I think you guys should give us reparations, because if you hadn't had the revolution, we'd have the whole, the whole continent would now be Canada. And if you were going to steal our land from us and drive the loyalists out, Tucker, you could at least have divided the continent east-west so that we Canadians <laughs> weren't holed up in the cold bit. Which so, half yeah, would you so, take? Uh, yeah, well, exactly. I, I, I think I'd have the half without the Californian presidential candidates in it right. uh, on balance, or maybe the bit in the middle, and you guys could have the two coasts. But, uh, but, the, but the point here is this is nothing real. Uh, yeah. This is nothing real to the lived experience of people of all kinds of identities today. And certainly not to Kamala. Kamala Harris uh, has a Jamaican father and an Indian mother. And I don't know whether it's the identity politics, as her father was suggesting earlier today. I don't know whether it's this whole identity politics obsession that means she has to feel she has to genuflect to this because her own experience is, in fact, entirely apart from the exactly. African-American slave it's experience. Also, it's, all, it's also bad, though. It's really divisive. Mm. Uh, Mark Stein, no, great to is, see you. Thank you really for that. Divisive. It is. Thanks a lot, Tucker. See ya.